Welcome to the podcast that's designed to fuel your success in selling technology solutions. I'm your host, Josh Lopresto, SVP of Sales Engineering at Tolaris, and this is Next Level Biz Tech. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're talking cloud today, but more importantly, we're talking about modernizing and some of the top three ways to help your customers do that in Azure. Uh, today, we're joined by Chaz Chalky, VP of Channel and Strategic Partnerships at DataPrize. Chaz, welcome on, man. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. So, Chaz, we'd like to uh, kick this off with uh, some good ammo we could maybe use against you later. But, uh, <laughs> no, it, it, look, I, I like to hear how people get started in this. Um, some people have had a very linear path. They knew what they wanted to do, and they set out and they did it. And other people in this industry just kind of sucked them in. So just tell us about you first. How did you get here? Where did you start? And uh, lay it out for us. Well, a, a bit of a windy path. Um, you know, at the heart of it, I think I just like to fix things. Um, and, uh, it was always just me and my mom growing up. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that I could help her and be self-sufficient in my own life. So that was really important to me. So, you know, I started working my way through high school and college with general contractors. So, you know, carpentry, electrical, plumbing, all that sort of stuff, which has saved me a lot of dollars uh, later in life, uh, being a homeowner. Um, and then, you know, over winter breaks, I would be a, a fishmonger. Uh, I don't know that, how that ties into fixing things, but, uh, it certainly paid well. Um, so I was a fishmonger oh, and what's a, what's a, hold on. What's a fishmonger? What does that mean? Uh, so like a, a retail seafood store. Um, so ah. all the, uh, all the wealthy people in, in Georgetown in DC would come to this particular, um, shop to buy their fresh fish. Mm. So, you know, think big chunks of tuna and salmon and crab and lobster. So yeah, uh, that, that was uh, it was a fun experience. Um, so that was more through high school. And then, um, you know, I, I went to college at James Madison University and, and studied integrated science and technology. Uh, so I figured it was probably time to start focusing on some technical stuff and things uh, to do some career development. So uh, I got an internship doing quality assurance work for an e-commerce business management platform type of organization. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember being there and my laptop blue screened and it started making this loud beeping noise. And the whole office is just staring at me. And finally, I you know turned the laptop over, pulled out the battery, and, and it stopped, obviously. But I got to watch the IT guys fix the computer. Um, turned out to be a hardware issue. Uh, but then I watched them kind of reload the OS and configure Active Directory. Well, I don't know if it was Active Directory back then, maybe NT back office. So you know, we're, we're I got to see that, and that that really is what got me hooked in into technology. Um, after college and after that 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 kind of quality assurance gig, uh, me and another gentleman had a, a two-person MSP slash ISP uh, based out of Northern Virginia and did that for about four years. Uh, paid myself a whopping 18 grand a year for those four years. And turns out you can't live in Northern Virginia with an 18 grand salary. Uh, so I started looking around and um, uh, found DataPrize in, in 2005. Uh, and, and came on board as a network engineer and a consultant and sysadmin uh, and been loving life ever since at DataPrize. So, you know, did all the technical stuff, moved up in, in throughout the management around there, helped start a few departments, and then ultimately led me here to working with the uh, channel and partnerships. Love it. Awesome. All right. That's a good windy story. <laughs> so tell tell us about, um, before we kind of get in to, to, to really expand on who DataPrize is and your Azure practice and all that good stuff, where in that journey did you first learn about Azure? Where did it click? Where did it make sense? Where did you realize, okay, we, we got to pay a lot of attention to this. This is a big thing. So I first learned about Azure probably back in the BPOS days, if you remember that, before the precursor to O365 business mm -hmm. productivity productivity online suite, I think. Yeah. Um, so that what was that that was around 2007 or, or 2009. And, um, you know, I remember all of the MSPs or VARs freaking out, because Microsoft was taking away uh, a product sale with, you know, exchange and SharePoint and kind of potentially the management of those things. So um, I, 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 we were all concerned about that. Um, and then, you know, it turns out it just helped us grow. It, it added to our own internal offerings and uh, maybe even shaped what data prize is as an MSP, right? Because you could do so much more remotely than um, staff org type of work. So 
um, we went from that network consultant staff hog to being a more nimble managed services org. So, you know, moving people hours to kind of support and, and business out, uh, outcomes being done remotely. Um, I remember getting my, actually my VCP back in 2007 and, you know, kind of putting all my chips in the VMware basket uh, and then seeing this Azure product come about um, and, you know, realizing that, that Microsoft is probably going to dominate this eventually. Uh, so went ahead and got the MCSE in, in kind of the Microsoft stacks uh, and, and been able to, to work with Azure ever since then. But yeah, I would say the first time I heard about it was back in that 2009 when it was kind of the, the .NET ASP worlds and providing that platform there. Got it. Good stuff. All right. So, so then tell us about for anybody that has never worked with Data Prize, kind of fill us in a little bit. You know, what what is Data Prize? What kind of stuff you cover? And then uh, once you lay that out, walk us into kind of what you guys are doing in Azure. Perfect. Yeah. So, Data Prize, we're uh, a nationwide cyber led MSP and MSSP. Uh, we provide managed cybersecurity, managed infrastructure, and disaster recovery as a service, uh, managed end user and service desk, and managed cloud. Uh, obviously, we'll be talking some of that today. Um, and then those services are rounded out by a nice uh, project management office with uh, project engineers, project managers, and VCIOs and VCISO teams. We hold a few strategic partnerships with companies uh, like Veeam and, and Microsoft uh, that help us focus on what we like to call a, a battle-tested uh, reference technology stack, um, something that we can focus on and really be experts in supporting that environment. Um, we're a Microsoft managed partner, which is an exclusive group of partners, right? I think it's 1% of partners are, are managed partners with Microsoft. And uh, that gives us a high level of engagement with them. Um, we're also in the process of finalizing our Azure expert MSP status. Uh, I think the last step to that is, is getting your uh, ISO uh, certification. So we already had our SOC 2, so now we're going through the ISO. Um, but that'll put us in an even rarer group of, of Microsoft partners with that Azure expert MSP status. So we're, we're really proud of that. Um, obviously, with that, with those designations, we're pretty tightly focused on the um, the Microsoft stack, uh, and our Azure services uh, range from obviously the migration, right, getting people into Azure from on-prem or a data center or another cloud-based solution, uh, and then the optimization of their cloud-based environment, right? How can we make them run more efficient? How can we optimize uh, their billing? Uh, and that's that pretty much rounds out the the stack there. So you bring up a good point, right? I mean, the, the 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 title of this track is three ways that we can help them modernize. So maybe walk me through one or two of these key ways. I think sometimes it's the art of the possible. I think what we realize in these discoveries is that people don't know what they don't know. So right. maybe walk me through how you help them understand what's possible from a modernization perspective. So one thing that we talk to partners about and customers about is that with uh, with going into a cloud-based environment like Azure, your backend technology is gonna be far more capable than anything most customers can afford themselves internally, right? So you get this robustness, this redundant environment that you're more often than not got, not going to be able to, to put in place uh, internally uh, or even at many data centers. So, um, you know, some some capabilities with the, the local hypervisors like VMware or Hyper-V back in the day, um, you can get all of that without the investment in hardware and software, right? So you're kind of built to, to scale uh, and, and grow uh, as, your, as your company needs it, right? So you have this easy migration path into Azure, be it a forklift or a lift and shift, right? Where you're kind of optimizing the technologies. Uh, and then you can grow from an SMB to mid-market, right? With the click of a button or maybe some changing in licensing. Um, so the, the ability to scale, the ability to grow is, is a, a, a big thing that um, we like to highlight for our customers and for the partners. Um, you know, if, if the, in the COVID era, right, you have uh, people working remotely uh, or uh, back in the day, a lot of people traveling, right? Still, we're doing that now. Lord knows in this job, uh, we're, we're all traveling. Um, so that roaming staff, right? You don't need... Uh, expensive end user compute devices. You can have a lightweight device that uh, will connect to Azure Virtual Desktop and the O365 services. So you, you, you don't need that heavy investment in the end user technology like you used to have. Um, 
And then a, a common conversation that, that we used to have with, with customers and, and now with partners was kind of, was overcoming that security concern, right? So, um, you know, I don't want to go to the cloud. I, I can't touch it and, and feel it and see it. I want to see the blinky lights. Um, and the conversation we have with them is, you know, imagine your budget for security uh, and, and now envision Microsoft's budget for security. Which one do you think is higher? <laughs> Who has a greater investment in protecting your uh, your devices, your your information? It's probably going to be Microsoft. Um, so those are some of the ways that we help uh, explain what's possible, right? It, you you are given the opportunity to take advantage of far more advanced technology than what you could do internally uh, with your own resources. So walk me through then. Uh, I, I think you paint a good picture of the why and, and, and how you help customers through that. But maybe take us back to one of your first cloud deals there where you really got to see, OK, these are the customer needs and this is what we did. Because we're going to we're going to look at the far spectrum of this, of a more recent deal here as we move on. But sure. let's walk us through maybe one of these first ones where your eyes were really opened up to all the possibilities. So, you know, I'm trying to think of a, a specific instance and I, I don't know if I can nail one down, but I can remember the the general feeling, right? And one of the big things was the ease of getting people back up and running when there was an issue, right? And that issue could be at the system level, right? With an OS failure uh, or some some hardware failure in their back office servers uh, or with connectivity, right? If your internet goes out, go work from a coffee shop, right? Go, go work from home. Um, if there's a system failure, we'll just spin up another virtual machine or, or spin up your backup uh, online in the Azure environment, in a cloud-based environment. So, you know what, I can't recall the, that, that first, you know, taste of what cloud was, but I can remember the feeling of um, kind of being an advocate for the customer and saying, you know, this, this is what allows you to sleep at night, right? When, when you go into the cloud, you have this quick turn up if something happens, right? If something, if, if some catastrophic event happens at your office, go home and work from there. Uh, go to a coffee shop, work from there. Uh, when my kids are home, I can't work from home. So so I'm sure a lot of people had to go <laughs> to the coffee shop. Same, yeah. Uh, right, right. So that's kind of the, the first impression that I have of the cloud. Fair. Uh, all right, so, so let's talk about a CFO's three favorite letters, ROI. So how... <laughs> You know that that I think that was some of the initial problems that we had with cloud was getting people to realize no this isn't it's not I get it you could pay for it uh, you know if you buy this box right but but here we are again in 24 months and we're not modernized and now you're you're a, a, a major airline that had a big debacle when two storms hit back to back and they couldn't handle it because they never invested in the infrastructure yeah. how do you help in these conversations when you're talking about modernization what are what's something that you do to help them understand ROI and, and, and how they're going to see return on something like this. So, you know, I previously mentioned that ability to scale. Um, I, I think that's one of the, the, the big selling points for the CFO is, you know, if, if you're um, going through an acquisition, uh, do you have to spin up a brand new environment to support that acquisition? Uh, or can you just leverage your cloud-based technologies that are already in place, right? You have a, a branch office through an M&A activity, uh, or you're just, you know, growing organically, um, you may not need that local Active Directory server, right? You may not need that local file server. Take advantage of, of what you can do with Azure AD uh, or and SharePoint combined with the Office 365 tool sets, right? Um, so so being able to scale quickly is, is, is a, a big one. Um, another conversation with the CFO, depending on the business model that they have, is do you want to go to OpEx from CapEx, right? Get out of the recurring hardware game. Do you want to spend uh, thousands of dollars every three to five years trying to spin up a new environment or, or keep up with the latest technologies that your your critical business apps require to run? Uh, or just want to throw all that stuff up in Azure uh, and, and turn up the resources as needed, right? So getting out of the, the CapEx uh, to OpEx and, and not being reliant on hardware uh, is, is, a big, is a big one as well. It's good. Um, all right. So... If I flash back, you know, some of my personal first four days into cloud, uh, AWS or Azure, it, it was when there was a very limited amount of services. It was some VMs and then maybe some some VNets or VPCs, right? The virtual networking stuff comes along and then some mm. storage, whether that be a blob or, or whatever it is. So I think it, it feels like if you look at the, the features and functionality 
that these cloud environments have now, this, this tech stack has evolved a ton from traditional virtualization. Um, how do you, how do you see that, you know, how, from your perspective with what you've seen in Azure, seeing that tech stack evolved and really, um, how are you bringing that to market and how are you helping customers understand that? Because maybe they, maybe they only know it as what they see it when they first saw it. Right. So, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with not just the infrastructure as a service, but utilizing the platform as a service, right? Um, where you're taking advantage uh, of applications that may already be published within the Azure marketplace. So you don't have to spin up a server and, and manage that OS. You're now just optimizing your environment to run a particular application. So uh, while there are a ton of benefits to IaaS infrastructure as a service, um, and it's still the right fit for, for many, I think the, the, the evolution, I don't wanna say recent evolution, but you know, where it's going right now is, is more of that platform as a service. You know, you're seeing uh, virtual firewalls uh, up there. You mentioned the various connectivity applications up there. You're seeing financial applications that are just built to run as resources uh, within the a in Azure environment, right? You don't have to spin up 25 servers to, to manage each custom business application. So uh, I, I think it's uh, it's really that evolution towards the, um, you know, less as an infrastructure as a service and more towards that just running the application uh, without the backend infrastructure. So that way you don't have to manage it. You don't have to have the staff there to, to manage all that infrastructure. So let's talk about, all the offerings or or situations of where data prize can help right so all right if i'm if i'm a partner and i'm listening to this point um i'm understanding <clears throat> what some of your offerings are but uh, maybe i'm thinking in my mind okay does the customer have to spin up a net new azure tenant with data prize can they take over a customer's existing azure tenant because all of the stuff is already there and nobody wants to move it out and they just manage it and I can I can get paid on the management of, or you know what, lay that out for us. What what can I do? What can't we do? So you left A and B, I'll do C, all of the above. <laughs> um, so data prize, uh, you know, we can do that assessment, right? We can find out how to optimize a migration into Azure, right? That's where the benefit of a supplier like data prize and, and many others in your portfolio uh, that can really bring their expertise and, and, and make the migration more efficient and then the ongoing management that much simpler, right? Because we, we really optimize that migration in there. Um, so we help you determine what should go into the cloud. Maybe sometimes things need to stay on-prem, right? And, and we'll, we'll keep it there. Um, we'll certainly optimize an existing cloud environment, right? We'll, we'll log into Azure and, and make sure that everything is configured appropriately? Uh, are you using the right platform uh, to, to deliver the service to your end user base, right? Going back to that IaaS versus kind of a, a platform, do, do you need a server running there or can we just spin up one of these applications uh, in there? And then obviously we'll do that management and, and kind of and billing optimization. One thing that um, is, is great about uh, what we've done here recently is we provide a, uh, a, a billing tool that really gives transparency and, and clarity into the Azure billing environment. One thing that I'm sure you'll hear from partners who are familiar with the Azure world and even Microsoft staff themselves is trying to understand the Azure billing uh, practice uh, takes a, a, an advanced degree. Uh, we have simplified that in a reporting fashion and, and we've done that through a recent acquisition that that Dataprize made with uh, Airnet. Um, gosh, that's a bit, about a year ago now. So we already had a, a pretty stacked group of uh, Azure expertise, but uh, when we acquired Airnet, it, it took us to a whole other level. Um, and they have brought this custom development that allows for better reporting, better optimization uh, within the Azure world. So much so that uh, myself and and some of the the, the team we're, we're out speaking to Microsoft account executives and we're strategizing with them, right? How do we sell Azure managed services and Azure migration services to the world, right? How, how do we go about getting everyone into Azure? So Dataprise really likes to cover that whole suite from training the partners on, on how to identify Azure opportunities and in many cases, how to sell Azure opportunities um, if they're interested in going that far uh, and the, the migration to and the optimization and management of 
We're also a, a, a CSP, so we can provide the licensing to the customer. Uh, so we like to be that kind of warm blanket to, to help with all the, the Azure needs. Love it. All right, good. Uh, I always loved, by the way, in, in school, uh, all of the above. That was a good safe test question for me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right, so so walk us through an example. Uh, give me an example, something recent. You know, the, in this question, I always like to hear, are you seeing a lot of things that start off exactly like the partner brought them to you? Or are you finding there's more? Or are you finding they don't look they don't look exactly like they did? So maybe walk us through that. What did the transformation look like? So I'll actually give a specific example that we worked with Microsoft on. And Microsoft actually created a video of our work themselves, right? And put it out there on their, their YouTube channel. Happy to send it out there for anybody that needs it. Um, but when Microsoft uh, puts a video out about your services, yeah. you, you gotta, I feel a little proud of that one, right? Um, so we worked with Microsoft uh, on the Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, Department. And um, the, the Florida Fish and Wildlife, as with all the, the, the departments within the state, have uh, a mandate through the cloud bill that the governor put out to move all of their infrastructure from on-prem or in the state data center uh, into, into the cloud and into Azure. So uh, not necessarily into Azure, but Microsoft and, and Dataprise kind of won this opportunity to, to put them into Azure. So, you know, they were in the state data center and that, that cloud bill is obviously helping to reduce costs for the state, right? So you have uh, labor that's running the data center. You have um, the utilities like electricity, which is a, a crazy expense for the state to, to manage that data center and then the real estate costs, right? So they were incented to move into the cloud. Um, this department was in a race with another department to see who went lights out first. Uh, lights out meaning lights out of the data center, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so we, and they won, by the way, by working with Dataprise and, and the internet team. Um, so we took advantage of the, the AMP program, which is Azure Migration and Modernization Program. And for those that don't know, that's uh, a potential funding source for projects uh, to move customers into the Azure space environment, something that we're, we're happy to help with. Not a guarantee, the limited budget, but uh, we're happy to investigate for that for, that, for customers. Um, they were in VMware in the data center. Uh, and again, they, they moved to Azure. And the thing that they got to really experience the benefit of was what we mentioned before, right? The, the lack of the hardware renewal process um, and, and being able to take advantage of um, the latest and greatest backend infrastructure within Azure, right? So they didn't have that three to five year cost. They didn't have to hire VCPs or VMware certified individuals, you got to take advantage of everything that comes in Azure just as a service, right? So there were some platform as a service uh, opportunities there. So uh, they moved from SQL uh, to an Azure-based SQL resource. So you're not spinning up uh, a SQL server and uh, in a, in a, in a Windows OS to, to manage the SQL. You're just taking advantage of the native SQL processing, which is actually for, for customers that, that have databases, that's a huge cost saving activity there because the cost to run databases locally is, is pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. So Azure can really provide some, some benefits there. Um, and then, uh, you know, that the CFO uh, of the state saw the ROI there and, and now you see more departments uh, in the state moving into Azure specifically. So um, we like to think it was a great win with Microsoft uh, and Florida Fish and Wildlife again. They won that. They won the competition to get in there first. Love it. Uh, and and can you give us name that program again? I want to call this out because I don't think a lot of people understand this. Uh, the it, go over that for just a second if you can. So it's called the AMP program. A M M P Azure Migration and Modernization Program. Uh, so it's Microsoft's source of potential funding for customers to migrate into the Azure ecosystem. And in some cases, um, broader than that, right? There are other funding sources to get into Office 365, Power BI, Teams, you know, et cetera. Uh, but this one specifically was the AMMP, Azure Migration and Modernization Program. Got it. So um, if I'm, and, and, and I, yeah, I want to put the precursor out there, right? It's not guaranteed money. But what mm -hmm. you have to realize is that 
Microsoft wants to get specific accounts migrated over to Azure. And um, if you have those accounts and you have great relationships, right, you, you got to come and you got to float it by Chaz and say, hey, is this one of those accounts? What if I have a relationship in here? What if we can target it? Can we go leverage that bucket of funds? Because there's nothing better to help a deal than the customer hearing, oh, and somebody else will pay for some of that? Wait a minute. Uh, okay, I don't have to go for that big non-recurring charge on part of the migration. Good stuff. Absolutely. Any any help uh, certainly greases the the wheels for the, uh, the deal. Cool. All right, so um, final couple thoughts here. Uh, if maybe I'm excited about Azure now, I didn't totally understand everything of how DataPrize could help me modernize or how I'm gonna go talk to my customers about modernizing in Azure, but I get a little more comfortable with it now that I've heard this. What do you what what would you tell a partner uh, that again maybe they're selling in an adjacent area or just not touching this area? Is there questions that you want to give out? Is there a strategy idea that you want to give out? Um, what are your thoughts there? Uh, so oh, there's a lot of thoughts here, and this is really why Tolaris has put together this portfolio of suppliers, right? Just to help partners kind of navigate this, um, navigate these waters. Um, so first, I'll say with any technology, right? Uh, if you're not comfortable selling, uh, just get your foot in the door, right? And the partners will help you identify, which I'll, I'll get into, uh, obviously, to answer your question, but bring a supplier like DataPrize into the conversation, right? And we'll work with the partners in any way you need from being just the SME in the conversation or to owning the entire sales process. Um, but just get that foot in the door so that we can have a broader conversation. Um, Really, and bring in your team, right, Josh? Right? Bring in the, the the sales engineers and uh, and help them pick the right supplier for the opportunity. Um, second, for those that have sold data center solutions, right? There's a lot of similarity in the sale. We're talking about the difference between a, a private cloud and a, and a public cloud. So if you've if you've um, if you've gotten them in the cloud already, uh, and they're looking to take advantage of a uh, a bigger name like like Azure and Microsoft, then it's a, it's a pretty similar sale there. Uh, a potential differentiator between the two models is that Azure can be a try before you buy, right? So oftentimes you have 30 to 60 days to uh, dip your toe in the water, right? Do you want to spin up O365? Do you want to spin up a resource? Uh, do you want to spin up a, a, a virtual firewall to see what the connectivity lo looks like into the Azure ecosystem? Do it. You got 30 days to, to try it. So there's a low to no risk uh, try before you buy scenario there. Um, but partners should listen for a few keywords, right? Um, Office 365, if they're, if they're already in the Microsoft ecosystem, most of the time Azure makes a ton of sense, right? And Josh, I think I heard you say it in another episode, which I'm absolutely going to steal from you, uh, which is second money is easier than first money. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, now that you're in Office 365 and you're in Azure, sell them EDR with Defender. Sell them MDR and SIM with Azure Sentinel, right? DataPrize can do both, by the way. Uh, so, you know, help them uh, help them take advantage of the full Microsoft ecosystem. Other things to listen for, right? Um, staff layoffs or resignations. Uh, we're coming out of the big quit uh, and the great resignation. I don't know if we'll ever come out of it, but um, th those are things that uh, you need to be aware of and, and keep your ear out uh, for. So, you know, it's hard for a company to keep internal staff happy, right? If your internal staff, you're gonna be managing the same environment day in, day out. And uh, us IT folks, I don't know if I can say us anymore, but the IT folks uh, love to have a challenge, love to see and learn new things, right? Uh, that's where the benefit of an MSP is. We have thousands of customers that we can see a ton of different environments. And so our knock is, is never bored. They're always looking at, at new stuff. Um, listen for aging or poor performance, right? On, on hardware, uh, is someone asking about a hardware refresh, uh, or are they saying that, uh, they, they've had a few companies look at this SQL server and it's, it's just still running slow. All the calls to action are, uh, just taking seconds to, to perform. That's a, that's a big hint there that, uh, you may want to take advantage of some Azure resources, um, a catastrophic event, like a, like a cyber incident, right? Um, our DRAS solution actually backs up to Azure. So we can spin up your, your services in Azure uh, pretty quickly, right? Within minutes in many cases. So um, taking advantage of, um, of, of what is possible with Azure 
uh, you know, against an, an unfortunate event, like, like I said, like a catastrophic event or uh, a cybersecurity event. Um, leadership changes is another one. Uh, we see that a lot. Um, previously, gosh, over the past year, um, money's never been cheaper. So there was a ton of M&A activity. Um, and that can lead to a different technology strategy, uh, which is applicable across all opportunities for partners, right? That could be a, a UCAS, CCAS opportunity. That could be a connectivity opportunity, uh, MSP and, and cloud migration. So um, th those leadership changes and, and getting your foot in the door with a new leadership team is, is key. Good stuff. All right. There's, there's like 15 nuggets in there. Go find one. Go pick it out. Good stuff. <laughs> Um, okay. So Chaz, final thoughts here, uh, in your humble opinion, let's just look out. I know it's hard in this space as it's evolving so much to look out more than 12 months, but if we're looking out and, uh, and I'm setting, you know, the deals that I'm going to focus on the, the, the customers that I'm going to work on in the next 12 months, do I double down on everything that you just mentioned and just go, or is there anything that you think is going to be changing in the industry at all that you want partners to consider as they go out and talk to customers about this? You know, I, I, I would double down on the cloud and, and Azure specifically just because Microsoft tends to dominate, you know, in, in the technology stack that they buy into uh, and, and become best in class for, for those services. So bandwidth is, is only going to continue to get faster and cheaper, uh, enabling, you know, better connectivity to the cloud. Uh, so that should ease any concerns about connectivity to the cloud, right? Both your local connectivity and then uh, bandwidth and access within the Azure ecosystem. Um, you'll see more applications running natively in Azure, right? I mentioned some of the ones already. I think you're just gonna see more and more applications being developed to run in a cloud ecosystem rather than on a local hardware and, and operating system, right? So you'll see more and more of those in the Azure marketplace uh, that uh, will allow you to spin up firewalls and storage solutions and, and really any other technology needs. Uh, hardware, we're still in a supply chain, you know, era where there's a ton of shortages. Just, you know, try and buy some of the firewalls that you need or uh, some of the servers that, that you want. And uh, you may be waiting six months, right? So, uh, and they're not cheap either. <laughs> So you may want to take advantage of that Azure uh, ecosystem. And, and like I mentioned before, get out of the hardware game because um, there's always going to be some sort of event that could impact the supply chain, uh, that could impact the, the cost and the availability of hardware. So um, I see that trend continuing uh, and, and, and just kind of lean in on the, the cloud-based environment and, and take advantage of that. Uh, and then the last aspect is uh, obviously AI and, and automation, right? That's impacting every aspect of our lives. And chat GPT, writing uh, love letters for, for people, uh, I think I saw out there recently. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's included in the cloud and the migration and, and management of things like Azure and, and other cloud-based resources are, are going to be that much easier uh, by taking advantage of some of those tools. So. Um, it's up to the suppliers like Dataprize to, to keep ahead of the, the automation and AI and, and take advantage of it, which we are. Um, so automation and AI are just going to enable you to do so much more in the cloud and not to have to have that on-premise equipment. And, you know, there's, there's going to be industries that most likely will need on-premise equipment, right? Those in the healthcare industry with local medical devices, um, machinery, machining uh, plants, right, where you have to have that millisecond connectivity uh, for, for the, the machines to operate correctly. But I would say the vast majority of industries are, are going to be heavily utilizing, if not already the, the Azure resources in the future. Love it. Uh, I was going to get worried if a call was going to go by or maybe like a three hour block of my day and we didn't talk about chat GPT. So I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, <laughs> you get the shakes a little there's, bit. There's, I do. I get the, the more Twitch than normal. And so, yeah, <laughs> um, it's going to be interesting to see how that, that investment pans out. I think it's going to be exciting. Uh, I love that stuff. So, Great, man. Uh, look, we, we covered a lot of great stuff. Chaz, appreciate you coming on and doing this with me, man. Love being here, Josh. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. That wraps us up for today. I'm your host, Josh Lopresto, SVP of Sales Engineering at Tolaris. Chaz Chalky, VP of Channel and Strategic Partnerships at Dataprice. Till next time. Next Level BizTech has been a production of Tolaris Studio 19. Please visit tolaris.com for more information.